Sometimes you need to wait for data before displaying it inside your app. Everyone knows simple methods that return immediately data that you can display on the screen. Next to it we have a future return type which allows us to return this value later in the future. In this case, we want to wait for four seconds until we return this value. And finally, we want to display this future data. Therefore, we use a future builder. Inside of it, we place our future data and return a widget that displays the status of this future data. In our case, we need to wait for four seconds until the future completes and returns a value. This value that is returned, we can then access over the snapshot data. We also need to check if we have some data already returned, because most of the time we are actually waiting for the data and during this waiting time, the snapshot data is null. With this, if we hot restart the application, then we wait for four seconds and after this, the data is displayed in our app. Next to returning data, a future could also complete by throwing an error. This error message that is returned, we can then access over our snapshot error. And here we also need to make sure that we have an error. This time after hot restarting, we wait again for four seconds until the future completes. And after this, we display then the error message. Next, we look at a real case app scenario where we make a request to the server using the HTTP package and the server responds then after some time. So we need to wait for the server to respond. And then we get a result back with this random number or some data that we return from this function. And since the server takes some time to respond, therefore the return type is of type future. Also within the build method, we create a floating action button and if we press on it, then we call the set state method. A big problem right now is whenever you call the set state method, then the future task is restarted. So in our case, we make every time a new server request to get some new data when we call the set state method and this should not happen. To fix this, make sure to never call a method that returns a future within the build method. Instead, you pass here an instance of a future insight. This instance you create then within your state. And lastly, you initialize this future variable outside the build method. As a result, if we hot restart our app, then the future task is only called one single time and every set state method call after it doesn't restart the future task because here inside we don't call again a new future task with every build method call. For the case that you actively want to refresh your future, simply call again the get data method and put it into the same field that you place in your future builder and also make sure to call the set state to rebuild your UI. With this, every time if we click on this refresh button, then we make again a server request and refresh our data. Another big issue is if getting the data takes a bit longer, we simulate it by adding three seconds to our request. Then the problem is after we hot restart our application or in general start the app for the first time, we have this loading case for the first time. However, if we then refresh, then it takes again three seconds. However, we have no loading case and the data only changes abruptly. And this is because we have already some data and therefore he is always going into this case and is displaying the data that he has already and is never going into the waiting case. We will fix this later, but before it, let's also look at another case that we can also return a null value from our data. And therefore we also go here to the top and create a nullable field. If you now hot restart your application or start your app for the very first time in general, then you have this waiting case and it will always stay inside of it. It will never go away. And this is because we return this time as a data null. And here we basically check if the data is not null and therefore we are not going inside of this case. We are not going inside of this case. And therefore he will always go inside the else case and show this loading indicator. To fix both of these problems, we have the snapshot object that helps us. So as we learned, we can access the data of the snapshot or the snapshot error. And we also have a third case where we can access the connection status, which is the current status of our future. So as long as our future is not completed, we are going here inside and this is our waiting case. And when the future completes by returning some data or throwing an arrow, then we go inside the stun state. And in our case, we have then the same functionality as before. With this, we have fixed both problems. First of all, we go into the waiting case. 
And since we return the null as the data, therefore we go into the else case where we display no data. And also the second problem is solved. So if we return this time some real data and then we click on the refresh button, then we also display the waiting case every time if we are refreshing our data. We also want to look at what happens until our future is completed, what happens with the data and error fields. So if we hot restart the application or start the application for the first time, then you see that both of the data fields and error fields are null. However, if we once loaded some data, in this case the number 93, and then we click on the refresh button, then you see that the 93 is preserved during the waiting case. The same works with an error, so this error message and error will be preserved if we click on this refresh button and exchange our future. You see we have this an error message still there inside during the waiting case. Also you could define some initial data in your future builder. And this means if you hot restart your application or start your application for the very first time, then you have access to this initial data within this snapshot data field. So all in all, instead of displaying the waiting case, if you have some initial data, you could also then decide that you display the initial data over the snapshot data. So if you hot restart your application, you can immediately display this initial data until the future is completed. And then this new value of 47 is going inside of our snapshot data field and the initial data is then simply overridden. Which means once you have loaded some data with your future builder and then you click on the refresh button, it will keep this 47, this old data that we had here before and then only loads the new data and it will not display this initial data again. Mm -hmm.